It's like the yeah, kind of it's like the kind of moon like that almost looked like the intro to a uh, like a film like a, mm -hmm. a film studio logo would come oh, yeah. down over yeah. that. I can't. There's one I'm trying to think of, but I can't. <laughs> Are you hearing game stuff? Oh, uh, I am. Long Still not hearing from the records of time. There once existed turn the wrong way. Oh, I just wasn't working. I just, I can't turn the volume knob the correct way. That's yeah. just my problem. The umbral witches, dwellers of the darkness, and the lumen sages, controllers of It'll be kind of cool to uh, be able to watch this again. And their efforts to maintain the kind of be able to piece together the story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I should probably explain what we're actually doing. Because no one's watching the Wild Arms stuff where I first explained it. <laughs> but they might watch this. Um, I, our audio is fucked up on six recording sessions. The last three of Wild Arms and the first three of Bayonetta. So we're going through and uh, re-recording commentary after the fact. So it won't be as fresh as when we were first playing this. Which is unfortunate, but like you said, we'll be able to yeah. actually pay attention to what's going on. And it's just fun watching it again oh, yeah. after, because yeah. um, this was the first time I had touched the game, and I uh, think I, I, did I play this part? You or, did, yeah. And I'm, it's just, you know, it was so new and mm -hmm. crazy, and there's a guy talking, <laughs> and there's stuff that wants to kill you, and everything's falling apart. Oh, yeah. And so it's really kind of hard to pay attention to what's mm -hmm. going on. Yeah, it's not the best way to um, introduce you to this world. It's a great way to introduce you to the gameplay, but to have a guy talking to you and giving you the story while you're plummeting infinite thousands of feet and getting in sick angel battles, it, it, it gets a little bit lost. So is this part in the past, or...? This is, yeah. Because yeah. We're actually, I'm not certain... If, certain? <laughs> I'm not certain if this part is um, canon, if you will. Oh, okay. It might be. Because there is a moment where uh, it looks like... That moment toward the end where it looks like Jean's about to kill Bayo. Yeah. But then he turns around and defends her. So this might be something that happened after that, but before Bayo got sickled away. And we just don't see later on in the story. Or it might just be a dream match, basically. Oh, it's cool seeing these enemies. And, and you don't see them for a while, but you go, Oh, I remember that. You know, mm -hmm. I remember that oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's also new at first that it's a blur. And, you know, I, I didn't remember. Yeah. Mm. So this guy I'm narrating right now Is it anybody or is it just a no, voice? No, I think it's no one Because it doesn't sound like Baldur It doesn't sound like anyone It's just a voice Sure is a long fall though It is, like I said, infinite thousands <laughs> of feet And it's kind of hard to tell which direction they're falling sometimes And here's the great thing about Bayo You had just picked this up And everything you're doing still looks fucking awesome yeah. Like, I forgot for a moment that this isn't purely a pre-rendered cutscene. Uh-huh. You know, you're actually doing stuff. Obviously, you're not doing this. Because this is too cool. <laughs> and then they keep falling. Yep. Down. I don't know, apparently there's just a cliff somewhere in Europe, which is like 23,000 feet tall. And then sometimes if you turn upside down, you might start falling up. <laughs> Oh god, that part. <laughs> oh jeez, yeah, that no. wall. Ugh. Oh, it's gonna be fun to see all this dumb shit again. Oh yeah, Mr. Pizza Pasta. Buffalo, Buffalo of blood. blood. <laughs> I love these cutscenes. I just like. Uh, I got used to them. Uh huh. But now coming back <laughs> and looking at them and being and just like, oh yeah, they only animated a thing. Yeah. They they just spun the uh, the rotor a little bit move the camera around mm -hmm. they, they probably did do this in after effects i was about to say you can do this in after effects so that's like probably exactly what they did not little the little ring on the gun just, yeah just a little mm -hmm. bit just a like the the natural physics of the game taking mm -hmm. over for the moment and they like moved her to yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. these guys sacrificing themselves i'll just put little blood splatters down <laughs> The one guy who d takes it literally and cuts himself and starts screaming, and the other guy's like, what are you doing? And they all have these little pouches in their shirts. Yeah. Did you just cut the pouch? It's ceremonial. What are you... Oh, God damn it. Steve. Steve. Steve vestibule. E. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think right here we're about to struggle with the control for a little bit. 
I mean, I oh, struggled. No, we changed costumes, that's right. And the thing is, is I struggled in this game most of the way through, so I'm just wondering <laughs> how bad of a struggle yeah. it was at the beginning. <laughs> you got your daisy, you got your peach, you got your peach, you got your daisy. <laughs> no. Come on. I think we went with Link first. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I love how the sword is actually used. Oh yeah, once you get the sword. Because that's the thing, in Bayo 2, you... You get swords, and I think it's the same sword you have here, but you have two of them, and unfortunately you don't get the Master Sword itself. At least I never noticed that you did, and I used the swords there as basically my bread and butter the whole time. I never stopped to look at this, but that is a compact makeup case. Yeah. And each one of those is a little bullet-shaped uh, lipstick. Yeah. That's really that's really cool. Oh, yeah. I, that, that com <laughs> I completely missed that last yeah. time. Yeah, everything in this... Uh, God, just everything about this game is just supposed to be stylish mm -hmm. and glamour. Yeah, that, that's really what makes it incredible. And that's, uh, you know, we, we got into a discussion while we were playing this about sexism and in video games and depiction and, of women and all that. And all and how, the butts. All the butts. Oh, God, <laughs> we talked about butts for a while. And how um, you and I are basically of the opinion that... Oh, how do I put this again? Um... We don't feel Bayonetta is a sexist character, though mm -hmm. we can understand why yeah. people would draw that conclusion. Uh, but for us, the fact is, her her sexuality is a part of her character. She's not just a character who's been sexualized. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at a lot of characters, and well, most female characters who have been sexualized in Dead or Alive or any other series, and they've been sexualized just to make them an appealing piece of meat. Well, so so much, in fact, that they make a whole spin-off game oh, that's God. just yeah. about them being <laughs> sexy playing yeah. volleyball. It, but you look at Bayonetta, yeah, she is sexualized, and I'm not doubting that that's part of the marketing plan for this game, but it also feels like it's it a, an organic element of the character. Because well, everything yeah. she does is infused with it. it she's not just, uh -huh. oh, look at me, boys. Everything she does is... It, it flows from that sexuality of hers. It's not that they designed the character that, and they said we're going to have a sexy character who also is a witch. Yeah. Where you can see that in other games where you're like, oh yeah, she, this sexy girl is in a in a schoolgirl outfit, uh -huh. and, but she has a teddy bear that she fights with, huh? Yeah, huh? yeah You know, like exactly. then you toss mm -hmm. something on top of it, and there's a little bit more going on to Bayonetta than just starting off the, that she is sexy and then, mm -hmm. and then this and this. Yeah, and then all the... You know, like I said, her her character is very sexual. And so the whole time she's totally in control of it. Mm -hmm. And so it, it it just feels intrinsic. It's not like, oh, let's go save the world and take me seriously, even mm -hmm. though I'm wearing a halter top and have 36 triple D breasts. <laughs> well, it, it's... Uh, there was a time later in the game when I noticed that how she tugs on this lever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, that's not a sexual mm -hmm. innuendo, but <laughs> she's pulling this lever, and right at the end of the pull, she kicks her leg up to yeah. get one last mm -hmm. little boost of momentum to finish pulling the lever. And, you know, that wasn't necessary, but it's her character, is that yeah. she takes just... She takes the amount of, like, of time to do those mm -hmm. things because she really takes joy in all the little intricate things that she can do to be yeah. sexy it's just yeah, part exactly. of who she is like mm -hmm. she does a very like ballerina you know kind of dancer quality to everything yeah. she does and and her form is obviously idealized mm -hmm. you know it her i imagine if you measure her out her legs might be too long yeah <laughs> but her body but otherwise her body's not impossible mm. the way a lot of sexualized characters are I idealized like i said yeah you know it would take a shitload of work for a woman to have that exact figure especially having breasts that large and being that lean but it's not utterly impossible the way especially coming out of japan yeah the way a lot of female characters are coming out of there well and, and the thing that i like about bayonetta's figure one of the things i like about her figure <laughs> is that she's like tall and slender and um She's not childish. Yeah. She doesn't have a child's body with giant boobs. Yeah, she doesn't have a child's body. She doesn't sound like a child. It, it's not one of those... Like, even in Bravely Default, they had to do this. Like, the characters are <laughs> 14 or 16, and they all had to be beefed up to 18 in the North American release. Uh-huh. Because they're fictional characters, obviously. All you have to do is say, no, no, this character is 18. It's totally cool that they're mm. wearing this swimsuit. And it's, it's a little less egregious from what I've seen of Bravely Default, just because of the character 
know, design and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bayonetta is... Got... She she sounds and appears to be in her earlier mid-30s. Mm -hmm. Maybe late 20s, I, I guess, but she really comes across to me as mid-30s or so. <laughs> She's not at all just... What you mostly see from female characters in the sexualized, which is exactly that. Yeah. Like a air quotes 18 year old what they really mean is 14 to 16 yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's really what that yeah when a they hard say 16 maybe <laughs> she eats a pasta is uh, he astounded or is he just trying to catch water <laughs> droplets in his mouth like a turkey yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm. oh man bayo has to lift him up and turn him upside down to drain out his mouth from time to time yeah and uh this game isn't billed build as a sexy witch fighting game. Mm -hmm. um, you could, these could just be like, you know, Super Smash Bros kind of fighting polygons, right? And it would be an awesome game. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it's not, we, we discussed that too. They're not using her sexuality as a crutch mm -hmm. like uh, the Dead or Alive Extreme Beach games do. It's an excellent action game. They just said, we want uh, a confident, sexy female character. Yeah. And we're going to infuse everything she does with that. It's not just sexuality, it, it's physicality more than anything. And it's just, as a character, she realizes she has this yeah. light, athletic, physical exactly. body. And so all of her, because like you said, a lot of her moves are more like a ballerina. Uh -huh. It's Some of them are obviously pole dancing. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, yeah, it's just straight yeah. up pole dancing, which oh, is pretty yeah. cool, but... Oh man, Rodan's kind of awesome right there. But uh, a lot of it, especially her when she spins around, firing the guns from her heels and whatnot. Uh huh. They're just straight up dance moves. Like I think her dodge offset, she kind of hits like a pirouette. Yeah. And then goes back into the combo. Or uh, I like. I also think of uh, one of the weapons you can pick up off the enemies, and the strong attack of like spinning around. Oh yeah, so like the it looks like a halberd or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's uh. It makes sense, right? Like if a football player, a person plays football, mm -hmm. and they're a, a big, strong guy, yeah. and they realize they have the ability to push things really hard, and carry stuff and hit things, but they're not very agile, they're not going to do things in their day-to-day, -day, uh, agile as far as like, you know, darting around uh -huh. and, and that kind of stuff, right? Um, and she suplexes a dozen angels at once. Uh, like a, that... That football player person in their off time is is going to do movements and stuff. <laughs> They're going to move in a way that uh, you know benefits them based mm -hmm. on their ability. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you're a strong, mm -hmm. slow person, you're not going to all of a sudden want to do quick things. Yeah. So she's a very athletic, fast, agile, flexible witch lady. Mm -hmm. And so when she does everything, she she does it with that in mind because that's what's easiest for her or you know most comfortable for her. And I, you know, maybe that's looking into the character way too deeply. But yeah. That's just. But it makes sense yeah. that you would look into it way too deeply because you you're an illustrator. You do mm -hmm. a lot of character design, and both yeah. of us have played enough games and seen enough cartoons and whatnot to tell that you know that the way a character is designed is often based around how they will physically act in the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you design in the sense of illustrate a character based off like you you want to write them first you yeah. know what i mean and it's like what what is this person mm -hmm. you know how does she move you you can't start animating her and you know doing all that drawing her in different poses and stuff until you realize who she is mm -hmm. and once you know who she is yeah, she's very stylish very cool kind of cocky and sexy mm -hmm. and and sexy isn't an immediate immediate negative thing like i feel no. like that's a that's something that happens a lot now is that it sexy is immediately like Ooh, uh -uh. oh oh yeah people yeah. can be sexy like mm -hmm. that's just a that's just a thing that's just be sexy a... without being sexist yeah I mean, it, it's a fine line of course and unfortunately most developers i think i put this dash headlong over yeah. that line but uh yeah by Bayonetta? Suddenly have an accent. <laughs> uh, Bayonetta is a, <laughs> is a character who's just shooting the shit out of that angel. God damn. There's a character who's just sexy. Yeah. She's a sexy person. I know sexy people in yeah. my life, and they're just sexy. It's just in the way they, way they move and the yeah. way they talk. Oh, and, yeah. and it's not that they're trying to 
seduce at anyone at any moment. It's uh-huh. just that they are comfortable being that person. Yeah. You know, I know people who are also shy and people who are also assholes. It's just, <laughs> you know, who she is. Uh-huh. And and you had mentioned how she was shooting the shit out of that angel's face. Yeah. And moments like that and moments like the suplex where she suplexed that whole stack mm-hmm. of, of them or what was it like? I don't even remember what it was. Anyway, the suplex and then pistol whipping the angel's face and shooting uh-huh. it. That, like that's you wouldn't get that juxtaposition if she wasn't sexy all the other time, right? Yeah, Because exactly. she's sexy and uh-huh. elegant most of the time, but then sometimes she fucking does a suplex. Yeah, and it's sometimes like... she's just absolutely brutal. I mean, for God's sake, mm-hmm. yeah. your main method of using your magic meter in this game is the, the torture attack, yeah. you know, where she spanks an angel for a bit and then kicks it into an Iron Maiden or something, or beheads it. Oh, man, could you imagine using the gamepad like that? Oh, God, oh, no. Gross, I'm no, just thinking of... I, 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 yeah, using the, the touch controls, no. Yeah, because we use the pro pad. Yeah, pro and that was gamepad. great. Yeah, that I, felt I, awesome. I play Bayo 2 using the gamepad exclusively because I don't have a pro controller, and that works fine enough. Mm. You know, especially... I did have to get used to it, but once I got used to it, I think it was on par with what I have with the gamepad. It just... I wouldn't have had to get used to it if I had a gamepad, but... I can't imagine what the touch controls are like. I don't even want to find out. Oh, no. Tap the screen to attack. <laughs> then what happens? Then when, what do you do when you need to dodge? I don't and then know. You need to, I think you then, swipe or something. And then uh, you need to lock onto someone oh, God, at the same I don't time. And, it's uh, in, a, in the original Devil May Cry and a lot of other character action games, actually, if you, once you, you fail off enough, it will offer you an easier difficulty. Uh-huh. And the easier difficulties often come with a... In, an auto combo feature. Oh. It's like you, you you press the attack button once or twice, and he'll do what would normally be a very complex combo, uh, and and I hate that because yeah. it you because it's automatic. You don't get to choose what you actually want to do, and so if you actually want to stop and get the hell away or do a stinger to get to some other guy, you can't because you're locked into this thing. And I imagine that's kind of what the touch controls are like. It's basically you you tap, and then she'll just automatically do something. Yeah, that'd be gross. You know, it's also cool to think about is most games, uh, if there's a... Uh, I, I almost struggle to say sexy because I don't find it very sexy, but a sexualized character, um, as they would get beat up, you would more often than not see their clothes start to deteriorate. Oh, yeah. There and, are literal games like yeah. that, like the Kenra and Sagura games. And in this game, on the other hand... And that and that's weird, right? When you're getting beat up and uh-huh. you're getting uh, subdued, that's when the character's losing their clothing. Yeah. And this one, when she starts kicking ass, uh, you know, she starts. Oh right? yeah, yeah, we yeah. Never yeah. Used the more her. ass she's kicking, the yeah. <laughs> clothing she has. We didn't use her default outfit at all, so we don't get to see that. But yeah, once you get into the, once you're doing your combos, like it starts drifting away, and suddenly she's wearing like a, a one piece bikini mm-hmm. and like a two piece, and then. Once you get to the the bosses and you're summoning, you know, primal demons out of hell, she is naked. There's just a swirl of hair around yeah. her, covering her up, uh, Austin Power style. And it's uh, it's not like she's in the swirl of hair naked all the time. No. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's just once in a while. Mm-hmm. And once in a while, it happens to show that yeah, I'm doing it. And I you know, it's just like. They even call it a climax, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's there's it's it was just an obvious double entendre, yeah. but still. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, you know when you're when you're getting beat up in this game, it's not like she's making painful she's orgasm. Not, I was gonna noises. say yeah, that weird half orgasm noise that they uh, like she straight up dies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she just dragged. dies and gets dragged yeah. to hell, and that's it. And. uh... Yeah, there, there's so much they did right mm-hmm. with portraying a, a sexy female character mm-hmm. and not just, like, scared girl who, as she gets beat up, she... You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just implied. Oh, Those yeah, games yeah. are so messed up like that. It's... It's it's hard to think of another example of a character who is sexual without being, in my opinion at least overtly sexualized uh, the way Bayonetta is. Yeah. Because so many of them, like I said, just dash headlong across that very fine line. Even Final Fantasy does it. Um, well, lately. I'm playing 12 right now, and, you know, Fran is basically wearing some weird 
I don't know if it's supposed to be metal or lace <laughs> or what, but she's not wearing much. Yeah. Basically, she's a, a walking Victoria's Secret catalog. Yeah. But then so is Van. Van. Yeah, Van. Yeah. However you pronounce his name. Most of the characters in that game aren't wearing very much. They aren't wearing very much in 10 either. Is it? But it's fine there because it, it crosses gender lines. Male yeah. men and women don't wear very much. And I I would say that in in 10, it makes. I was gonna say a in 10, it sense. makes even more sense because yeah. they're in this. For the most part, they're in like a tropical, uh, ocean side yeah. climate for and, most of the game. And it's uh, there's a lot of themes of water and swimming oh, yeah. and even the blitz ball and mm -hmm. all that stuff. In uh, 12, isn't it? Is it a lot of desert? There's a lot of desert, and so yeah. it makes sense there as well that the characters. I mean, the 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 princess Ash. Once you get her in your party, after everything kind of kicks off, she is. Her outfit is ridiculous and <laughs> revealing, but it's again when you think about these characters living in a desert for the most part, it, it makes sense that she's mm -hmm. wearing something light and open. And say the same way that Van is just wearing like a vest. Yeah. I was thinking about the whole idea of a game where as your character gets beat up, you know, her clothes starts getting ripped off. Mm -hmm. And it's really weird, right? Like, why would you even design it that way? Why would you design it to where in order to get the reveal, you have to fail? Yeah. Like, that just seems wrong on all <laughs> levels. And whereas here, the more badass you're doing, the more of a little, you know, I, I guess little <laughs> uh -huh. reward you get. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, some of those games, like the Kenrin Sagaro ones, it's whoever is getting beat up the most that mm -hmm. happens to, and since that's a fighting game, it's as you beat up your opponent, their oh, clothes yeah. are breaking off, but it's still gross. It's still just gross, because that... Yeah. It, like, what is that very, teaching? It's this weird, <laughs> almost rape fetish. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's just... It, it's. I say it's gross, because it's genuinely gross. I look at it and go, ugh. And we spent most of this playthrough going, man, Bayonet has a nice butt. Yeah, man, I love it when women have that figure. Yeah, that broad-shouldered, you know, yeah. slim-waisted, not huge hips, but you know, uh -huh. wide, so they differentiate the the mm -hmm. waist from the rest of the body, and long legs that go down. And yeah, uh, <laughs> those ladies that are more like a, a rectangle than an hourglass, I yeah. suppose, if you're gonna get <laughs> uh -huh. crude with it, you know, down to that well, shape. Very, well, that very athletic look that yeah. love, mm -hmm. you know, women have these days. It's great. We also talked about that, you know, we're, we're fine with Bayonetta being sexual, but in my, for me at least, I I want more characters to be sexual. Yeah. Both men and women. Uh, it, like, I want yeah, it because, exactly. you know, I, I feel women should have, that was awesome. Yeah. That, was, that just looks so cool. Um, you know, I... I honestly think more women would appreciate having more men to, to ogle, mm -hmm. which Final Fantasy XII provides in spades, <laughs> especially Valthier. God damn. Yeah. Sexy ass man. That dashing handsome man. <laughs> that dashing sky pirate with a sexy <laughs> bunny know. lady companion. I know. He's got the best life. <laughs> like, compare, <laughs> compare him to like Han Solo, who's got this furry thing. It flies through space alone. Yeah, it flies <laughs> through space alone with this furry thing being chased by a big slug monster. And Valthier is just this dashing he's referring to himself to the leading man as the leading man even though you start off as van uh-huh because he basically is like i said final fantasy 12 would be like if you started final fantasy 7 playing as yuffie <laughs> but uh you know i i want more games to have sexy male characters for women to ogle mm -hmm. and have more sexy man but i just, just got yeah. that'd be fun and provide more variety well and it'd also make it more comfortable so that these kind of conversations hopefully wouldn't happen not not con the conversations are fine. It's the uh, mm -hmm. it's when people are straight up like starting fights. Uh, you know this is sexist. This is terrible. Oh yeah. And and then just our the way everyone's so uncomfortable with sexiness anyway mm -hmm. and sex in general. Yeah. If characters in games, male, female, alien, whatever, were just more sexy and you know a little bit more like Bayonetta sometimes if, <laughs> uh -huh. if their character is written as such people might get a little bit more comfortable with the idea of just characters in general yeah. being sexy and that's I think that's something that's harder to do with a male character because you're walking a very fine line there of you know when is he you can make him physically sexy that's mm -hmm. easy enough but how do you make him outwardly you know sensual in the way that Bayonetta is without it being creepy yeah, being almost rapey. Just, I'm not saying it's impossible. Yeah. I, I think Balthier is a good example of that because he he's never overtly just like hitting on anyone. 
that, that's not at all what he's like. He, he just will occasionally make a little quip. Mm -hmm. Like, there's one point where you all get captured, and they all have these, like, monocles on their, their wrists. Uh -huh. And um, for plot reasons, the character of Fran uh, goes into a berserker rage and <laughs> just snaps them off and takes out a few guards. And Balthier, being a just cool, calm, collected guy, just kind of picks you know, his lock while everyone's distracted. And he says, uh, I always knew Fran didn't like being tied up. <laughs> yeah, see? Just, if you could do little things like that with a male character, it would be not creepy. Because Bayonetta, if she was doing, if that was a man doing that mostly to female angels, no, it wouldn't be okay. But then that brings up a whole other discussion of why yeah. is it okay for Bayo to do this and not men. And uh -huh. in my opinion, it's just because men are always depicted as being in the position of power and women mm -hmm. are so often shown as just being objectively victimized. Yeah. Uh, especially, and might get shit for being racist for this, but stuff coming out of Japan, you know, it mm -hmm. is overwhelmingly like that. Yeah, at least the stuff that we see. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, more characters in games need to have more sexy butts. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. It, it shouldn't be such an alien idea. It, it shouldn't be such a thing that when a, a game comes out that has a sexy character that people have to get like on one side or the other of yeah. the argument. It should oh, just yeah. be like, oh yeah, that game, you know, mm -hmm. and just, it's that game. It happens to have a sexy character in it just because <laughs> it happens. Mm -hmm. It's like a movie. That movie has a sexy character in it. Mm -hmm. no, one, no one gets weirded out or anything about that because it happens more often. Yeah, and it, it's in games do think well movies a lot of movies do the same thing games do where they they do it but they do it poorly it's just movies are more accepted as a you know an art form mm-hmm <laughs>